So, you want to meet a unicorn, but they don't exist. Hey guys, welcome back to That's by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to make this cool looking uh, transition kind of thing in Blender. It looks really cool. Um, and I want to break it down uh, really quickly for you guys. Just share my process of how I made it. Um, we'll do some more stuff like this in the future later on, like more in depth and stuff. But I really just wanted to break down kind of what was going on in this specific scene um, today. So. The first thing, let's look. Let's, let's just play it a couple more times here. So you see, the first thing that happens is this little uh, logo kind of comes out and just like stamps right there on the screen, and then it kind of gets a little bit bigger. Like it goes into the uh, space of the R there, and then some stuff comes down, as you can see, and this little line comes around the top and the bottom and the sides. The word loading comes out of nowhere, which is really cool. And then it kind of gets swiped away in two different pieces here. And then it just loops back to the beginning. So, um, of course, the animation on the R is super simple. It's just um, it, it was rotated like this and I just unrotated it. Um, this is actually unnecessary. I don't know why that's there. Um, but yeah, so it, the R just unrotates itself. So it's flat and it just rotates towards the camera. And I believe the, yeah, the R just throws itself forward into the camera until it is past the camera. And then it just gets smaller, as you can see right here. So the right here gets smaller, so you can't see it anymore. There you go. And it goes down as well. And then once that happens, this um, background piece kind of slides down while the R is also sliding down. So you can't really tell. There you go. Um, so it's sliding down at the same time. And then this actually needs to be pulled up a little bit because it's clipping with the background. That is my mistake, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Oh, there we go. Nice. All right, cool. So um, as you can see, we have this. Um, the background comes down, like I said. So it just literally just slides down out of nowhere. And that's fine. So it's just a little bit of animation on there. So just hover your cursor over top of the um, the uh, the workspace and hit I and insert a location keyframe. Then move your cursor down here in the timeline somewhere else. Hit G to move this around. G Z to move it down like this, and then just hit I uh, location again. Move it, move it to a different location. There you go. Um, and then all we need to do from this point out is I wanted to make this really, really, really simple. So fortunately, um, it is a really, really simple scene, and I wanted to have like a little outline around the edges. So what I did to do that, what I decided to do for that was I just hit shift A and I searched for a plane, hit RX 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And all I did was I just hit S to scale it up a little bit, then an SX to scale on the X axis, hit I, I'm sorry, hit tab to go into edit mode, then hit I to inset this to make it like, so we can have a, a, a piece in the middle, um, put it to about like there. And then go to the face select mode up at the top left here. Hit delete. Delete faces. And then boom, you have a little outline of the uh, white white border. And then to make it animated like this, the only thing that I did was I hit tab. And then I added some loop cuts to this. As you can see, you can see so this is some loop cuts up and down, left and right. Just a bunch of different, um, bunch of different loop cuts going on here. So um, I just basically... Uh, went over here to the loop cut uh, tool and actually what I want to do is I want to hit um, X dissolve vertices actually I should probably do dissolve faces yeah instead I'm just gonna do that dissolve, oh, we do limited dissolve limited dissolve instead actually we can do that as well though but um, so X limited dissolve and then what it should do here is uh, there we go it should get rid of every single vertice um, that is in this um, piece so I can go ahead and do it on my own once again but as you can see as you can see what we have when I add in some loop cuts okay, it's lagging because there's a lot of loop cuts there you don't have to add that many but I added I believe a hundred on the top and bottom and then 50 on the um, sides so if you zoom in here you can see yeah, there you go so it kind of goes across like that and up and down just so it adds some sections um, just so it adds some se some sections on the um, the little outline so that it will build so let's go to the modifiers tab and add the build modifier so hit tab to go back out of that you can see we have these lines up here as well that are kind of building in just uh getting ready to come down as well um but yeah so essentially what this build modifier does which is add modifier build it, it takes every vertice and then slowly slowly puts it into the scene so if we go ahead and take a look it starts about right here 
and then it just kind of like goes up then that one goes down and it goes across then it goes across there um you can also put it on a randomize which doesn't look that good for this specific scene because it kind of just like puts in all these random things like this which could look kind of cool but not for this obviously but yeah so um it kind of just builds which is very very cool there you go and you can also reverse it so that it undoes what it it undoes the um the the outline which which should also look very cool which i might actually do wait let's do that real quick let's go ahead and actually grab the outline here i'm gonna hit shift d to duplicate it and then we're gonna just go ahead and move this 60 frame right here to over here right here and then we're gonna make sure reverse is checked and i'm gonna make sure the start frame is 155 there we go. Make sure randomize is unchecked. There we go. There we go. So now we have that one that starts at 60. Comes in. Um, and there we go. Unreverse that one. There we go. Perfect. Nice. But we needed this one to go away, obviously. So what we need to do here is we need to, we need to make it so that it uh, disappears. Um, so we're going to make it so that it lasts, uh, well, we'll make it so that it lasts about right here. And then like 130, we'll do scale, uh, hit S to hit, to scale this down to zero. So it's zero on your numpad, left click to confirm that and hit I scale. Now we just move up until we find this second one we placed over here at one, whatever, whatever frame that is 160. And then we'll just put this one where this one, um, goes so hit, uh, grab these two keyframes hit g to move them over and then there we go perfect nice cool so it kind of just like we just uh kind of glued these two together so this one starts over here and it's reversed so that the white line goes away and i kind of want to maybe make this one a little quicker so we'll do 30 frames instead of 50 yeah so that's that's noticeable you can see that before it wipes away Yeah, there you go. That's cool. All right, it's very, very subtle, but it's worth. There we go. Nice. Okay, cool. So that's um basically that. And the last thing that we need to talk about, obviously, is the letters and the wiping away. So each of these letters is um just randomly getting bigger. You can see it's getting scaled from zero. So this is scales on zero, and then I scaled it up to the regular size by hitting S and just hitting I scale. Um, and then it kind of moves over so you can see from here to there. So from frame 989 to frame 124, it slightly moves over, which is I location keyframe. And then we, if you go ahead and just slightly move it over all the way to 190. So from one, 124 to 194, I just hit G's X and move it over very slightly and then hit I location. Um, and each one of these letters are doing the same exact thing. So they're all different text objects. As you can see, I just hit shift D, duplicated it over, duplicated it over, duplicated it over, over and over again, and then just change the letter by hitting tab and then just changing the letter to whatever I wanted it to be. Um, so uh, that is basically that for all the letters. And then I just offset each different one so that um, they would all come in at different times. So essentially, I just made this one keyframe um, and then when I duplicated it, I just uh, double tapped A down here in the timeline to select all the different keyframes. Then hit G to move it over a couple frames. And the same thing for each and every different one of the letters. So that's really cool. The last thing we need to talk about is, of course, these two bars that come in and the at the end. So essentially what these are, these are two bars that I created um, that have the holdout shader attached to them. So let's go ahead and go to the surface. Hold out right there. So just change this from principal BSDF to hold out. There you go. And what this does is it makes everything transparent. So speaking of transparency, let's go to the main tab here. Um, and scroll down to film and make sure transparent is checked or else it will not render as transparency when you render it. I also have motion blur turned on with the shutter turned all the way up to 100 and the uh, max blur set to 512 and the steps set to 12. Just so it's a little... um. It's a little uh, clearer. So with that done, once again, let's go ahead. And as you can see, this animation starts on 158 and then just slides over 
um, at 150 at 183 to almost all the way off of the screen over here and then all the way off the screen by the time uh, 261 comes it gets to the center like that so that is basically all that I did there and then I just duplicated this same exact a bar and put it up at the top and then just offset the keyframes once again by just double tapping a down here in the timeline and being g to move these keyframes around so that is literally all that i did and the last thing you needed to go ahead and make sure when you render this um the file format has to be very specific for the transparency to work so make sure the file format is set to ffmpeg video open up the kodak change matroska to uh quicktime and then change the video codec to FFMPEG codec number one. And then you can go up here to RGBA and select this because um, RGB means red, green, blue. BW means black and white. And RGBA means red, green, blue alpha. The alpha means transparency. And you cannot render transparency if you don't have alpha. So make sure that's checked. Make sure you choose a file location right here by hitting this little folder. Name it something and then go ahead and go up to uh, file. Well, go up to render, render animation, and you are all set with your new transition animation. Looks very cool. Hope you, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed today's tutorial. Oh, and by the way, before we end, I forgot to mention this uh, uh, this image in the beginning of the animation is a shift A search. Uh, search, search, day, search for uh, images, images as planes. If you don't have this setting, go up to um, uh, edit preferences and then make sure you search up images and you can see images as planes is right here. Once you hit shift A and search for images as planes, it'll open up a little dialogue and you can select an image um, right there. And if it's a transparent image, make sure alpha is checked on the right hand side of the screen. But yes, I hope to see you ladies and gentlemen in the next episode, the next video, the next sequel to the channel. Um, but yes, enjoy the rest of your day or night wherever you are. Click the video on the screen if you want to see more tutorials. I'll see you ladies and gentlemen in the next one. But until then, bye bye.